So Man and I are making a pastry that I don't think we've ever made on <coughs> camera. camera before. It's a new braided uh, laminated dough. So we had our salted rosemary twist before kind of derived, originally derived of uh, scrap dough. Uh, this braid is, we, I don't think we have a very good name for it, not gonna lie. It's called a it's, braided Danish. The, like, other people, customers call it a strudel. They call it a strudel? Some customers call it a strudel. So, <laughs> we made, we made this uh, for the first time this year, at least, uh, with mulberries from our mulberry tree and also uh, from a, a mulberry farm. And uh, then we kind of went straight into making our own uh, preserves or fillings uh, that would go with this because it went over very well. It's a very attractive form factor. It's also very cost effective. So we went from a mulberry jam to a house-made strawberry jam. We went through all the strawberry jam and that was really popular. Uh, and now we're on kind of an apple pie filling, which is like spiced apples, uh, basically. So basically we split this into a 10 inch, uh, 10 inch by four width uh, rectangle. And then we split this side into thirds. Uh, on the outer thirds, we're going to cut what are going to become our braids. And then the inside center is where we put our filling. We're then going to fold over the outside and complete the braid. Sourdough croissant dough never fails to amaze me in just its wide range of application and versatility. You can make just absolutely beautiful creations with just one type of dough. And so now that we have that piece, I'm in a position to braid all of this. So now I'm gonna put the apple filling uh, pretty evenly distributed on the center. So I'm gonna now egg wash the very edges of this so that when we go to braid it, it there's some stickiness uh, between the edges and the rest of the dough. Why are you doing that? Do you remember? Because when we did trials, they uh, unfurled otherwise. Yeah, and when you- I would give them some stretch, right? Yeah, give them some stretch. When you braid them, you want them to be really as tight as possible. You're just crisscrossing back and forth. And I am not the best at this, admittedly. But this was my idea. We, um, in the really early days, were just, you know, having fun, messing around. It was so much more casual. And we did one week where we had a Snickers bar inside for Halloween, I think, around that time. It was delicious. I mean, who doesn't love a good old classic candy bar from your childhood? You know what's cool is like our pastry can, it's just so versatile. Like we are coming, our, one of our missions this year was to come back to core and balance. Uh, so core being like our core products. Um, and within that, I'm basically just talking about developing a structure. So these are the products that we have and then within them we can be creative because I think everything's a balance. I always talk about that. When we talk about core and balance at a bigger level of the business, it's, uh, it means that we need to start thinking about what we're good at and what we're not so good at. Cutting home delivery in 2022 represents uh, something that we want to give up that we're not the greatest at. Uh, adding more farmers markets, on the contrary, uh, represents something that we're quite good at that we want to double down on. Over the course of the year here, we have realized that our uh, best way of getting uh, 
bread and pastry to our customers is inside our own store. Uh, it's the least expensive for us to operate for the sale, uh, meaning the least amount of dollars per bread sold um, on top of the production dollars that we have to spend are spent when we sell from our own location. Uh, and the way that we've built our business over time has been very Saturday focused because we were in a garage. So the rules were different. We had less cost uh, by just kind of an exponent. Uh, and we were really able to build an incredible Saturday. But now it's kind of like we have to build all the other days up to match. And the best way we know how to do that is to have our own places to sell bread. So right now we're actually building two new stores in the city of Phoenix, near where we have uh, existing farmer's market locations and literally thousands of customers. We've spent a lot of time thinking about this and making plans. Uh, and now we're ready to put them to action. Uh, one of our stores is going to be just a tiny little hole in the wall, a 300 square foot sliver of a space in downtown Phoenix. Uh, it'll actually cost us less to run that store all month than it costs us in market fees to sell bread at a nearby market down the street. That one's kind of a no-brainer just from a position of sale. However, we can't just have locations like this because we have other needs, uh, such as like uh, storing flour somewhere, and also just trying to clean up some of our production flows. We also happen to have a lot of old equipment that's still very good equipment that we would like to put back into use in case any of our equipment fails. So I was... So no, it's not for sale, as many <laughs> people have asked. So I was lucky enough to locate a place in Phoenix right off the highway uh, Within five miles of that location is 1.2 million people. And what's interesting is this big center of a location has kind of an odd lot warehouse space that's being offered at a really low price point, combined with the ability to retail near the street in what we would call prime real estate, like uh, really close to our core customer base, uh, great demographics, great parking, just an excellent place to sell a lot of bread. Uh, there's enough space to bring our old equipment in. There's enough space to get flour by the full truckload, which is absolutely critical for us right now to kind of unlock the savings we need to be resilient for the future. So we're now really building proof of the future. We'll, we're building the proof that can survive through recessions, the proof that can survive through random events such as the ones we've had over the last few years. We're streamlining into retail. Even though it's an expansion project, it's also a streamlined project at the same time. We're going to invest uh, only an incremental amount more energy in order to be able to do a lot more business in the form of retail. We're definitely in the investment raising stage as we build out our plans uh, finalize, uh, finalize exactly where everything's going to go, work with architects, get the city planning part done, the permitting done. Uh, we're doing another crowd lending campaign on mainvest.com. You can see the link on this video to be able to read all about it. But essentially, if it's like a community loan, and it's a really interesting way for US-based investors to support small businesses that they love. Uh, because essentially the way it works is um, you contribute to this raise, this loan raise, and over the course of time we repay, uh, in this case, 1.6 times your original investment. You can invest as little as 100 bucks. Uh, so for every $100 you invest, we, we will agree to pay you back 160. Uh, the loan is written for a maximum length of seven years, although the way that you get paid back is as a percentage of our quarterly revenue. So we took on a similar type uh, product, loan product, to build out a portion of this facility. And in just three repayment quarters, we've actually repaid 20% of the overall principal and interest. Basically, that's the, that's the investment opportunity. 
It's nice in the sense that it can attract both large and small investors. You can be just a customer who loves our products and wants to see a store nearby uh, to where you live. Or you can be somebody that's been following our business strategy and believes in what we're doing and has the ability to invest a little bit more. Currently, we've already raised quite a bit towards this new project, enough that we can say that we've officially launched the project and it will happen. Although we're still far off from our optimal goal. Uh, and so I invite you to check out the uh, page uh, the main vest page that details all of this. I'm posting regular updates there. You can follow along. And really there's a lot of information about kind of what we expect our performance to be as a result of this next step. Uh, the nice thing is, is that we're just basically redoing some of the work that we did at a smaller level in the garage. Back then, uh, it was a lot easier to get the financial pie of our business correct because we had just much less cost and much less people to consider but nonetheless there's definitely a great pathway forward and we've laid a good foundation we've been building an audience of customers around the valley in these locations that we're moving into we've literally been attending farmers markets nearby for five years uh, we have all the capabilities already for this type of a retail move we have the truck we have equipment designed for Saturday level production that can do it on a daily. And in fact, that's what it's gonna take for our business to be in a healthy financial position. Because one thing that I learned in this uh, commercial space is that the asymmetry between our Saturday sales and the rest of the week, it's not healthy for a commercial bakery. It was healthy for a residential cottage bakery. But once we hit this level, a lot of issues that are created in having a one day a week that's larger than all the other days combined. And so uh, we've been building the team all year. We're literally doing step by step uh, a huge project that actually takes probably a year and a half. There was a period of time where we achieved this in the garage too. And that period of time was just months before we were forced to move. We had just finished uh, upgrades to the garage facility. We had just kind of reached a level of comfort and redundancy that we could kind of hold the line and uh, get to a financially healthy place and then stay there for a couple business cycles. We weren't really allowed to do that though. We had to uh, move from that space and develop a commercial setting. And so that kind of set us back in some ways, even though we are moving forward uh, as well. So uh, we're hoping to finally reach that kind of footing where we can uh, focus on refinement as opposed to just constant growth. Uh, but we will continue to grow to the point that makes sense from a, from a complete financial pie to make sure that, you know, there's a slice at the end of the day for Amanda and I. There's enough of a slice for our team to keep everybody interested, engaged, and improving. There's enough of a slice for ingredients so that we can keep the quality high. It's a big puzzle that we're solving for, and uh, we could definitely use some strong partnerships right now from people that want to jump in. Uh, there's tons of information on that site, so I just encourage you to visit it. In the meantime, we will focus on these amazing apple danishes.